Hey guys, Jay here, and today I want to share with you the first sort of finished build that I have planned for myself, right? I am, disclaimer, I am not saying this is going to be a super strong build for League Star. It is going to be meta or something like that. I know that it's strong, I think it is interesting enough, and I want to try it out. So this is one of the first plans that I came up with and actually finished with the, with basically thinking about a setup, right? And so it is Viper Strike of the Mamba. If you have seen Ziggity played it uh, in Affliction, which is two leagues ago, well, it is super, super strong. It even made it to the Build of the Week. Okay. Guaranteed it is very, very good thing, right? It got buffed heavily, actually, in multiple ways also. The reason why I say this one is the build guide-ish is because actually I do not have the finished product with POB not finished with their updating of the program. So I could not really get all the numbers and stuff together. However, I'm pretty sure this is like three, four times stronger in terms of damage compared to uh, Ziggity's version in 3.24. We have so much more tools. To scale the damage of the build right now than before and i am going to take a different approach in ziggy's version before he used tincture we do have tincture back right now by the way but it is on a warden class uh, and uh, i kind of want to to stay away from the initial pathfinder that he made i want to go crit and so i choose assassin and there's a bunch of things that works really well together this league that scales the poison damage of Viper Strike of the Mamba by a huge amount. And let's get to the actual things that is going to make the builds, basically. First thing first, Viper Strike or Viper Strike of the Mamba, whatever you want to pronounce, it is a skill that before, before and right now, actually, we still do not actually get to 3.25. It has 154% top end at level 20 damage effectiveness. It just got above to only 392%, so almost double. Yeah, we almost got double damage just from this one single buff, right? B4 is already very good. We already seen Ziggy do everything in the game with it pretty much very comfortably. Right now, it just got basically double in damage from this one change, and there's more, right? So, I am going to put Ambush as a core part of this build that I am going to, that I might be going to play, right? Uh, I'm uh, making different leak start plans, and this is one of them. This is the first one that I finished. Ambush, basically, it is an exert skill. It exert an attack from a one-handed melee weapon, which work in this case, what it gives 25% of base critical strike chance to that one hit. And then a lot of critical strike multiplier as well. That is not take into consideration the quality of it. Why do we need to go crit, right? Well, Perfect Agony just got a huge, huge buff. Now, all the critical strike multiplier that you have is basically convert into damage over time multiplier, which obviously scale poison, right? The downside of this keystone is non-critical strike cannot inflict ailment. So what we want to do is go for 100% crit, and it is super easy to get 100% crit with all the things that we have buffed in terms of critical strike chance this league and also we are an assassin which is notoriously easy to get crit cap with right so let's get further we are using night blaze support why do we use night blaze support because night blaze support give us a bunch of critical strike multiplier just a lot of it right up to 138% on level 20 support gem. And also some critical strike chance, some base critical strike chance, which is super good. And then, increased effect of elusive from supporter skill. 
this works really well with some of the other th uh, some of the other things that we are having in this build. First thing first, a mastery from dagger, elusive gan grant additional forty percent of critical strike multiplier for skills supported by nightblade. So this is just a more multiplier, and these multiplier, this critical strike multiplier scale with the effect of elusive. So naturally, the Miss Walker ascendancy from Assassin is going to give you a lot of elusive effect. You also gain some defensive bonuses, but mainly what we care about here is offense, right? Defense is nice. Here we care more about offense. Elusive is a no-brainer there. We also have a new anoint. I'm not sure how expensive the oil, the new prismatic oil is going to be so we can have access to this particular anointment. However, this is just going to make the build stronger. It is nowhere in any way going to break the build if you don't have it. It's just going to make the build stronger, more consistent. That is it. If you have it, you have way more uptime of a high percentage effect elusive. And also you will cut off from the low percentage uh, elusive faster, basically, at 20%. So the minimum amount of elusive effect you are having is 120% of the base of a elusive, right? If that makes sense. And then you can obviously just get elusive again. There's a lot of ways. One is you just get it on crit, on any crit, because you probably are crit cap, so that's going to be very easy. You also can just press a button that we are probably using as a withering step, because withering step do give a lot of wither, uh, wither stack on the enemy, and also it gives elusive, so we'd win, right? Anyway, Pestilence Strike I want to mention here as a like kind of honorable mention in the setup. Maybe we will use it when we do not have all the gears Bino's kitchen knife by the way if we didn't have the weapon yet we have no way of proliferation for the poison unlike playing as pathfinder as an assassin we need the Bino's kitchen knife in order to clear it is a very good weapon for this it has very high physical damage it got, just got buffed with the critical strike chance well, without it we don't have proliferation and so we can use things like Pestilence Strike here. It is a melee skill which got heavily buffed this patch as well. It has a built-in kind of AoE slash proliferation already in it, so we can use it for clearing potentially. Remember that you can also use things like um, Cobra Lash for clearing. That should be good as well. Next part. Some of the unique items that I think are going to be helpful early on or is going to be strong in the end game setup of the build. First thing first, Unjil's Harmony. This is super, super strong early on because we don't care about the downside. We have that same downside from Perfect Agony anyway. So with this one single item and a decent crit weapon, you probably are crit cap already with an assassin, right? So a lot of critical strike chance that is super, super easy to get and just give you a bunch of uh, consistency to the build early on basically highly recommended i don't think this is going to be used a lot so it's not going to be expensive right second one obviously vino's kitchen knife i would go almost to a point that i can say that this is a mandatory item for the build it's just super nice it's give you proliferation for poison also give you a little bit of regen for map sustaining. Uh, I mean for sustaining on map. So it's very, very nice overall. It is also a very high physical damage weapon, which is ideal for the build. It just got quality buff. So with a high damage quality buff, we have even higher damage. Also, it has more base crit chance because the base item got buffed with the base crit chance. So naturally, this is going to somewhere like a top percent maybe a little bit more base crit weapon basically so very very high base crit chance next thing I want to mention not a unique item but this is from a cluster jewel eventually when we get to the stage where we can scale with a lot of cluster jewels 
The thing that you want to look for is obviously low tolerance. This is a no-brainer for Viper Strike of the Mamba because you only deal damage with one single poison. So, poisons you inflict on non-poison enemy, which is always, right? Will always have a lot more increased damage. And this is a no-brainer. Stack as many of it as, we, as possible. We do have one from a mastery on the skill tree. Next one, I want to mention Badger the Brotherhood and Marilyn's Fallacy. These are two items that is possibly good for endgame. Badger the Brotherhood is more comfortable. It gives you more speed. It gives you overall more mobility in a sense. And also it does give a lot of elusive effect, which is good both offensively and defensively. Remember, we have a lot of crit multi tied to elusive. So, hey, if we have more elusive effect, that is a very, very good thing to have. Marilyn's fallacy is more simple. You basically just get a lot more crit multi, which is translated into a lot of more dot multi, right? However, it does have a downside of 40% less critical strike chance. I don't think that it's going to be a big deal. The reason why is we have way 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 too many ways to actually scale crit chance in this build there are so many buffs to crit chance we are an assassin which very easy to get crit chance and yeah we i think we can just get over this less critical strike chance very easily basically and remember we are using ambush which gives a huge amount of base critical strike chance whenever it's actually needed Next part, the skill tree, well, I'm sorry I did not have like a POB skill tree for it, so yeah, but I think uh, just look at it, it's kind of somewhat easy to follow, right, so here I will go through a little bit, so right here, this is uh, crit multi for dagger, we trying to get a lot of stuff for dagger, Life evasion on the way, perfect agony and crit multi to scale damage. Uh, so here we go out on chaos damage, right? Grab the life here, get to the crit, get to the crit multi for dagger. Here some more dagger stuff, some chaos stuff. Uh, grab some aura things because I think they are just very good nodes overall. You might not want to get it early on though. Get some life over here, perfect agony, more daggers things, more dagger, one um, power charge for more crit, some accuracy, life, some uh, mana on hit and mana leech, and the instant leech mastery so we can get uh, sustained mana and some life as well. Oh, no, I accidentally, okay. Also, we get suppression. Yeah and uh, crit life this is poison this is the only actually the only poison wheel that we are taking the reason why is the note over here if we crit with a dagger we guarantee to poison so we don't need any poison chance anyway and we already get quite a lot of poison chance from the viper strike gem 60 percent and this ascendancy node by the way 40 percent so we already have 100 percent so any source of uh, crit of uh, poison chance is actually not necessary. So this is the only things that we are taking. I think this is attack speed and poison duration, which is very good. The notable actually give poison dot multi, which is useless, but we have attack speed, right? So this is the best poison wheel to take down here. The reason why we want to take is because the mastery that we want to take. The mastery is 300% increased damage of poison that we inflict on non-poison enemy. So, yeah, that is just a low tolerance, but on the mastery. On the left side, we are going to here. The reason why I am going here is eventually I want to use a natural instinct over here, which is going to give us a bunch of very nice stuff like movement speed, uh, accuracy, life, uh, attack speed, crit, very, very nice stuff. And also, with the addition of Pirandus Pack to the core game, eventually we can, of course, get like a Pirandus Pact here with either life if you want more survivability, but I think nobody is going to go for that. We are going for increased chaos damage, 6% per point. And these combination of jewels is just very, very strong. 
it's just going to give you like uh, around 200% overall case damage. So that is potentially something that I want to just put into a build. So here, of course, we are getting Mage Bane. It is very good for capping your suppression. Right? If you already can cap your suppression, remove it so you have a little bit more evasion, if that makes sense. The mastery for daggers that I've taken is the 10% uh, chance to suppress per dagger that you have, and also the uh, crit multi for Nightblade. Right? Very, very simple stuff. Here, the crit mastery that I take is 25% crit multi with, uh, with um, unique enemy. You can also early on take the 150% chance increased critical strike chance against enemies on full life. That is also going to make the build much more uh, consistent. I forgot the word, right? Next thing is going to be the linked, right? My bad. Okay, my son is in the background, even though it's dark, but he's somewhere in the background. Viper Strike of the Mamba is going to link to, of course, Nightblade. That is the mandatory things. The other things that you are going to have is among these support gems over here. We are having the candidates being Sadism. Swift Affliction, Melee Physical Damage, Deadly Element, Void Manipulation, and Critical Damage Support. I think the best four will be Melee critical, uh, melee Physical Damage, because you can have an Awaken version as well. Swift Affliction, for the same reason. Deadly Element, Void Manipulation, all for the same reason. We just want to do one very, very big hit. And so, uh, yeah, I think those are just the best setup. Again... I might be slightly wrong over there because I did not really have the number on POB, but it seems to be, you know, the obvious choice, right? Next one is the ambush setup. This probably is going on a dagger or a uh, shield. It's going to be a three links with ambush, life tap, and second win. Life tap for quality of life, so you don't spend mana. Second win, so you have potentially two uses before you actually get to wait for the cooldown. So, most bosses, probably you will only need two uses. Right. Pestilence Strike, this is the honorable mention that I had. If I have this one in the setup, it is going to be Multi-Strike, Accessor Call, and Melee Splash. Just purely for as much coverage as possible, and Multi-Strike is for some additional quality of life when you have faster attacking, yeah, just that. The reservation I'm going to have is Flesh and Stone, Grace, Precision. Grace and Precision are kind of obvious. My son just turned on the light. Flesh and Stone is actually very good right now. It is going to give you 10% less damage taken on Sand Stands, which is going to be the stance for Eternity in this build because we don't really want the damage here. Uh, if you want two more damage, you actually can just put on the Hero of Agony instead. They both are 25% uh, reservation, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, he's asking for some milk. <laughs> Plague Bearer for additional clear speed, by the way. We can have Whirling Blade linked to Life Tap and Brutality as the main movement skill. The reason why is Brutality is going to uh, prevent the Whirling Blade from accidentally putting a poison onto the enemy. So, because Viper Strike of the Mamba cannot poison a already poisoned enemy, if you read the text on the script, on, on, a, on the skill, so you need to put the Brutality in here so the skill cannot deal any damage beside um, physical, which means it cannot poison, right? So Whirling Blade, Life Tap, Brutality is going to be the go-to movement skill here. I would like to also use Flame Dash as another gem in this particular setup. The reason why is Flame Dash can be very good on situation where we need like instant movement. Just tap it and it will instantly blink you to the spot that you want. So it is very good. Also, 
Whirling Blade cannot get over cliffs, so Flame Dash can take care of that as well. Last but not least, Alchemist Mark. Actually, there will be another gem here that I forgot to put in, which is Withering Step. Both of them should be linked to Life Tap, and they are like on the weapon slot or something. So you have 6 linked on Body Armor, 4 linked on, say, Helmet, 4 linked on Glove, 4 linked on Boots. Well, I saw a problem there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... Yeah, we don't need pest Pestilence Strike, right? If you want to, we can use Pestilence Strike as a gem swap there. Yikes. But anyway, that will not be a problem at all if we have Bino's Kitchen Knife because we have proliferation to take care of the clear, right? So uh, forget about Pestilence Strike. <laughs> or maybe just use it as a build before we actually get Nils Kitchen Knife. Then we can switch into uh, actually Viper Strike with the Mamba. The... Yeah, I think it actually should work out really well because uh, early on, right, before we... I think if we reach the end game bosses... It's, which is where we kind of need the the damage from Viper Strike or the Mamba, we probably are able to afford a uh, Mino's Kitchen Knife. Even though it is a rare item, I don't think it's going to be expensive. It's maximum probably one or two divine, I think, right? I could be wrong there, so please do not 100% trust me here. Well, anyway, Alchemist Mark and uh, Withering Step. And life tap is going to be the last three limbs. The uh, life tap is going to allow us to cast them without using mana. The withering step here, you don't see here, but it should be linked here. Withering step should be able to help us to inflict a bunch of wither stack very quickly. And alchemist mark is very, very strong for Viper Striker Mamba because. The damage from Alchemist Mark is based on the biggest poison that you have. In this case, we only have one big ass poison. And so it just synergy really, really well. Normally in poison build, the Alchemist Mark is very, very useless. But in this particular build, it is super, super strong. It is a lot of extra damage. Well, last but not least, personally, from the start of the game, I will say just play with Cobra Lash. I think it's going to be feels the best feeling skill to you know, the best feeling skill to play with early on, and until the point where you can get the gems, the gear for this, you can switch to the actual cell. Right? The passive skill tree is pretty much the same. The only changes that we are going to make is uh, well, we can use Cobra Lash with GMP instead of melee physical damage. Uh, he's singing something, right? Well, just use Cobra Lash, GMP, and uh, instead of melee physical damage, because that does not apply to range attack, right? You can also use uh, LP early on, so. And that is the end for this video. It's a little bit... Uh... Okay, I... It... There is a lot of problem with this video, right? But uh, I think the setup is solid. Personally, I think the setup is very, very solid. From what I've seen earlier, I think this is going to be a good plan if you want to follow it. However, it does depend on um, the price of the Vino's Kitchen Knife. I think that is a key item to get. Even if you don't play as the Paper Strike of Mamba, Vino Kitchen Knife is still going to feel good if you play with like Pestilent or if you play with uh, the Cobra Lash anyway because the proliferation which just means you clear so much better and uh, yeah clear speed is very very important early on. so yeah that is everything I have for this video today so if you think this is interesting please leave a like and subscribe and yeah until next time Please stay tuned for more video. The next one is probably going to be on Caswen's stunt, by the way, at the Lake Star Imperative. Stay tuned for that.